Legend. All right, everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Scrambler Shootout. We've got a really fun video for you guys today. We're gonna be comparing and contrasting these three motorcycles, and we feel these are the true blue authentic scramblers on sale today, and Spite, why is that? Well, these are all ostensibly street motorcycles that have been dressed up to play off-road. You see they have bigger front tires, they all have spokes, they've got cradle frames, skid plates, well, not a cradle frame over there, but regardless, they're all designed to go off-road and play a little bit in the dirt, but at their heart, they're street motorcycles. So we're really gonna test today the true scrambly nature. Hit some gravel, hit some twisties and see which one stands out the best of these three. Yeah, because we feel that in the modern world now, Triumph and Ducati has come out with some real hardcore scramblers that can do jumps and have huge suspension travel. But what about these old school scramblers that have just been lightly modified to go off road? So today we're gonna run them through their paces and let's start out by checking out this Ducati over here. All right guys, first up on our Scrambler shootout is this Ducati Scrambler. This is a 2015 model, the first year that they came out, and we got this bike from Twisted Road. We rent a lot of cool bikes off of there, and I'm an investor in the company. Hit the link down below and check out a cool bike you can rent. So this one has an 803cc air-cooled Desmo V-Twin mix, about 75 horsepower, nice and pokey engine, fuels great. It's been modified slightly up here, used to have handlebars, now it's got these Clubman bars. This motorcycle also features an 18-inch front end, which is kind of a strange size, and uh, spoked wheels and it's on these kind of flat tracky style off-road tires so as you can tell with the skid plate down here as well this bike's definitely designed to have some fun off-road all righty guys hipster spite in the flannel and man bun to talk about the triumph street scrambler what makes this motorcycle a scrambler well it says so right there but it also has a 19 inch front end high pipes cradle frame and an off-road mode it's got a 900 cc engine that's making 65 horsepower and 59 foot pounds of torque and the best part about it it's a giveaway bike if you want to get entered to win this motorcycle click the link in the description down below and get yourself signed up hey guys my name is whitney i'm head cameraman here at yammy noob headquarters this is my 2018 bmw urban gs we've got a 1170 cc boxer twin it packs 110 horsepower 86 foot pounds of torque uh, arguably, it's set up right now a little bit more for the street, but it still has like a nice, sexy high fender, 19-inch uh, front end, 17-inch back end, and obviously, it's kind of the prettiest one of the bunch. Alrighty, everybody, we are out here on location riding the ultimate scramblers. Well, I don't know if they're the ultimate scramblers, but this is our ultimate scrambler shootout video, right? So there's that. Yeah, we're gonna find out which one is the ultimate scrambler. Yeah, I'm aboard the trusty Triumph over here, of course I am. Wow, that's crazy when you turn this thing on how much the whole bike shakes, that's awesome. Holy <laughs> <laughs> That's a real bike. Yeah. Whoa, man, that's a lot of torque. <laughs> Smart, you're saying the R19 feels big? Yeah, I mean, it's between how long the bike is and how wide the cylinders are, It's it feels very substantial, but it also doesn't feel super duper heavy, you know? The, the turn-in is a little bit on the slow side, yeah. but I really do like the feel of it, and whenever you shift gears, it's got this mechanical lurch to it, which is a lot of fun. Well, it's under 500 pounds, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, it was 487, 40, I believe. Yeah, 489. And Whitney, I'm sure you're adjusting to that new kind of clubman stance that that scrambler has, right? Oh yeah, I feel like a, like a 1970s anime cafe racer. <laughs> I love how loud it is, though. Yeah. You gotta get a set of pipes on your Beamer. Time to see how scrambly these ultimate scramblers are. Yeah, that's some gravel now, baby. Some real rough road stuff here, huh? Wow, this is crazy. <laughs> and I do wish this had just a smidge more travel because it's, it's a little bit chunky through these bumps. Although I yeah. can sort of stand up on it and then that problem disappears. Although your standing position on it's kind of funny because your legs have to be <laughs> so wide and cylinders are so wide at the bottom too. Yep. 
I gotta say, the Triumph Street Scrambler here, I mean, I, I just, I love the neutral stance this bike has, man. It just feels great. That is one of the things I really like about that bike, is just how easy it is to ride. No matter what you're doing, it's just easy. Yeah, tackle this right here. Whoop. Gotta add some spice to my, my little scramble adventure here. And now the road has disappeared and turned into gravel, so. Yeah, but this is like the good kind of gravel. Nice and flowy, perfect for these bikes. Do we need to slow down so that you can play with all your technology? Yeah, I do need to adjust my technology here. <laughs> Let's see. This is a cool little road though, man. Yeah, I like this. It's kind of, kind of fun. This thing's really cool. <laughs> it looks cool. I mean, it's such a great looking bike. As we said in the shop, it is, it is definitely the prettiest. It just, it looks good out here, you know? Like in kind of some rougher trails and that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, this is where it's meant to it's be. It's like you're in a commercial. <laughs> How you doing? I definitely almost ate it like twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what scrambling's fun. about. It's fun though, yeah. This thing is surprisingly good right here. Like this is this is where it's meant to be. You should definitely put some of those Pirellis on here. Charge! <laughs> well, huge potholes up here. Watch out. <sighs> Got a little water here. I'm gonna go in the middle here. Should be okay. This is all just clay through here. Yeah. You're best going through the water. Got more traction. Okay. Uh. No drops. Oops. How's that left or right up here? <laughs> Are you stuck? <laughs> the, no, uh... not yet. This is my first rodeo, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. All right, Whitney, Whew. you are not wearing the right boots for this, but that's okay. I am absolutely not wearing the right boots for this. So just go through the middle. Just go through the middle, just be nice and mellow. Your feet are definitely gonna get wet. Just push on. Oh, you're, you're spinning back there. She might you need, need a little where's push. Where's the Ural when you need it? Yeah, I know. Oh, right? dude, the Ural would conquer this, no problem. Up, up, you're clear. Yep, there you go. Hell yeah. <laughs> Look at the bag at the rear, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, a moment for the piece to camera here, guys. This is why you want a bike with uh, some more tread there, because poor Whitney's bike over here. You just cleaned it this morning, too. Yep, oh well. That's <laughs> fine. And it's all caked on there now. So, Spite, where are we going next? Well, let me pull up the map real quick. Because I actually don't remember. It splits here. What was that? This is great. This is so much better than I thought it would be. I love this <laughs> I definitely challenge. want to bring the DRZ out here. I definitely thought I was going to eat it over there. And I was like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Props for getting that thing through there. Yeah. So Whitney, you don't have any real off-roading experience, right? No. Can trial by fire taking a rented Ducati Scrambler through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think that's what's so addicting about the whole motorcycle experience. You're like, you know, it, just do it. I think that's the spirit of scrambling too. Here's where these bikes really shine. Like fast, flowy, like mixed pavement, gravel type of stuff. At least they just eat this stuff up. It's great. Yeah, this is perfect. What we were doing was pretty gnarly. This is, this is right in their <laughs> wheelhouse. Yeah. Oh, little chihuahua, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> He's so angry. <laughs> Why are you, do you want to kill me? What's wrong? My name is Hiff. <laughs> big dog, big dog. Honestly, props to Whitney for riding it through on a like bone stock Ducati Scrambler like street spec on Clubman bars. Yeah, that you're, is. You're doing awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I would prefer to you know, I like the leverage you get when you stand up riding. I've done that a few times on the R9T, but damn, being leaned over and huh. 31, you're like, okay. Am I a Kyle now? I don't know what you are, but you're killing it. <laughs> <laughs> First time in the dirt. Unbelievable. I'm a Kyle Lena. Yeah, we might want to clean this guy's bike before we go to turn it back in. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, Scrambler. 
Man, these Clubman bars feel really weird out here. <laughs> this yeah, this, is already, right. this already feels a million times better. You don't want to drag some knees, Bite? Oh. Like, I can tell just by looking at how you're riding, you look a lot more confident oh. on that already. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, when you're riding off-road, you really want taller handlebars. Man, this little V-Twin is so nice, though, because it's so predictable and smooth and easy going. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't... Oh, there he is on the left. <laughs> Here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, am I Elon McGregor yet? <laughs> yeah, you are. You're on the BMW. You're all set. Oh, yeah. That's right. This guy in the cat's probably like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> we're scrambling, bro. Where's the cafe? We were told there was a cafe out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going a little bit slower than I'd like just because there's so many potholes and hitting one of those at speed would be uh, not fun. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just hit two dead on. <laughs> just <bottomed laughs> it out. Yeah, they're pretty deep, so I wouldn't hit them faster than like 15 or 20. I heard the, I definitely heard the suspension go kathunk back there. <laughs> I definitely hit it going 20. It's kind of like if Cow Creek went through war and was like half dirt. <laughs> yep. Oh, look, they marked the potholes here for you. How nice. Instead of actually fixing it. <laughs> I just marked them all. Here, avoid these. You know, it's funny you were mentioning it because we're here in Jonestown and you'd think that they ticket enough people to fix their roads, but they don't apparently. Yeah, clearly not. And then you know what's going to happen? We're going to put this out and everybody's going to look at the road and be like, you know, where I'm from, that's just called a road. <laughs> yep. I feel like this is the cafe racers, the, the cafe racer scramblers home. These really nice tight corners. You know, I think the thing that people think about these bikes as well is they're like, oh, it's got these like crappy little suspensions on them and they don't handle well. But I think the Ducati and especially the Triumph handle beautifully around corners. This thing handles great. It holds the line like nobody's business. Yeah, especially even on those tires. Yeah, you're not you're not really trying to push this bike. You're just trying to poodle along. And when you're doing that, it's it's totally adequate. So Whitney, how's the venerable BMW feeling around these twisties? You know what? I, I don't take it on twisty roads very often. That's what like I ride the XSR 900 for, but it's super smooth. And I didn't really notice the lurching until uh, Spite mentioned it. And I can kind of feel that now, especially coming from the Ducati Scrambler. Uh -huh. where it's super smooth, but it still likes to, you know, take smooth turns. And not being a cruiser rider or ever really riding cruisers, it is hard to kind of get used to that weight in the front. But it's not uncomfortable. Yeah, I got to imagine that the BMW feels just super nice through these kind of lazy corners. Just super easy going. And yeah. I kind of like that, that shaky, lurchy nature. It gives it a little bit more of an agricultural feel, which you kind of want from an air-cooled scrambler. Yeah, it definitely handles corners better than the XSR. Yeah, that's that BMW build quality right there. The Germans know what they're doing. But yeah, it's kind of neat, man. I feel like, you know, these bikes, they promote the idea of adventure and taking them your own way and all this stuff. And you know what? You can do it with them. But would you rather have a dual sport to do that? Yeah, I mean, if uh, in my heart of hearts, I want a bike that can do a little bit more, and a dual sport's always going to speak to me more than a scrambler. It's why I've got my sort of pseudo dual sport scrambler. I've kind of met myself in the middle there, but mm -hmm. um, I think they're great. I, I just I really like this category of bikes, and they're uh, flexible and amenable enough to I think almost all riders, unless you're a hardcore like racing or track day kind of guy. Um, I feel like these bikes have really broad appeal to a lot of different kinds of riders, right? Like first time yeah. riders, returning riders, maybe long term riders that want a, a poodle around town kind of bike. They look cool. They sound cool. It's hard to not like them, you know? Yeah, they're, they're, they have this nice vintage classic feel. That's why they sell an absolute <laughs> load of them. Yeah, and Whitney being the, the owner of one back there, I'm sure you can speak to the uh, the owner's appeal. Yeah, I mean, I come from the vintage motorcycle realm and I feel like I waited years to just kind of splurge on something as 
sexy as this bike. I, you know, it was so cool to kind of watch the emerging motorcycle industry kind of tap into the neo retro stuff. It's like the moment I had been waiting for. Alrighty, everybody, wrapping up a fun day, scrambling, dicing up some twisties, enjoying some neo retro classic bikes. Whitney, how did you feel about the Ducati today? Despite the clip on clubman bars, I did have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it still handled it pretty well, despite, you know, hurting my lower back, but <laughs> I would scramble it in the future. I would leave the stock bars on there. Um, I had the Urban Enduro before, and that fender really helped. It would help yeah. with the mud and everything. Yeah, yeah, you did get caked in some good mud. Yep, we gotta wash this before we send it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Spite, how did you feel on the, the BMW over here? That was a legitimate surprise. It was amazing how it just wanted to trundle along the trail. It just, it just kept going. It was so torquey and the mm -hmm. weight is so low and the wheelbase is so long that it's really easy to just trundle along. It's, yeah. it's super predictable. It's doesn't feel super heavy despite almost being 500 pounds and the 19 up front really helps and i was riding this one back and i could really feel the difference between the 19 and the 18. yeah you know you're thinking one inch in diameter well it's not that much right it makes a huge difference big rolling difference yeah and i kind of feel like the street scramble over here split the difference between these two bikes mm -hmm. it's a little bit heavier than ducati a little bit more torquey it's not as big as the bmw over there it's got the 19 inch front end it's got mm -hmm. a more aggressive knobbier tire than that bike I was pretty damn comfortable riding around today on all of it. I'm not gonna lie, I had a really nice time. It was a pretty good bike. Yeah, I was definitely a little bit jealous of this thing. You were just able to trundle along super easy, yep. get going a little bit quicky, uh, quicker. Yeah. Um, I think it has a little bit more suspension travel than either of these two bikes too. Just so. a touch, but it does have a pretty limited ground clearance. That is um, true. Which is kind of a uh, you know mark against it. But it kind of goes to show you guys that you don't need to get a super top of the line scrambler with crazy suspension travel and all that to just trundle down your favorite back road. We did it on these three bikes, which would probably not be, be advised on the roads we went down, <laughs> but they did it just fine. You can go out there, have a fun adventure, and uh, enjoy your scrambler. So Whitney, if you I'm gonna probably think you're gonna take your own bike, which of these would you pick out of the lineup today? You know what? I'd probably throw some knobbies on this and I would take the R9T. I feel like the weight really helped it in every, yeah in every, uh, you know, sense, every turn, every- It's got these giant cylinders, so if it tips over, you don't have to pick it up too far, right? Exactly. Yeah, and you got the cage too. Bottom it out and it does just fine. Yeah. Spike, what would you pick? Well, it's a toss up between the Triumph and the BMW for yeah. me. Uh, the BMW was an amazing surprise, but I do know how capable this bike is. I think the Ducati is really hampered by the Clubman bars on this motorcycle. So in, in that way, we can't really grade it equally, but yeah. it's also really small. It didn't feel super comfortable. I like a big commanding stance, which you can't get on a bike this physically tiny. This and this seat really nice, tall, upright. Yeah. And that feels great to so me. So you're telling me you didn't want to drag me in the dirt on this with the Coleman oh, bars? Oh, absolutely not. Okay, got it, just making sure. <laughs> Man, I think for my take, I would take the Ducati and I would give it a little bit more suspension travel. I'd beef up the frame, make it a little bit taller, maybe put a 19 inch front end and I'd probably just get a desert sled because that's the scrambler I like the most. But if I had to pick the line about it today, I think I'd stick with the street scrambler too. It's ridiculous how confidence inspiring this bike is on mixed conditions. Um, it's really easy to ride, which is crazy and it's really fun to chuck around. So I think I'd pick the Triumph over here too. It's a lot of fun to ride. Yeah, it's a great bike. And do you think that not having a sixth gear hurts it? This is the only bike today that doesn't have a sixth well, gear. Fifth is such a massive overdrive gear. So I don't I don't think it matters, but on the highway, it does feel funny. You get that DRZ effect of just wanting to click another gear. You're like, I don't have it. Okay, I guess I'm just in fifth, but mm -hmm. didn't really hamper it. Um, but yeah, you can have fun with whatever motorcycle you have, guys. Just go out there and enjoy. Uh, we had a lot of fun riding today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Between this and my desert sled, you might think I'm just some horrible biscotti boy, but really, if you click this video right over here, I will prove to you that I love more motorcycles than just Ducati biscottis. Click it and find out.